great to meet you. Where are you located? I'm in Washington, D.C. What about you? Excellent. I'm in Kansas City. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, it's great to meet you. And before we get into your life as a coach and kind of how we got here, I want to know over the last three, three and a half years, how did you survive COVID and how has it changed you? Um, great questions. Well, you know, it's interesting because in my first career of almost 20 years, I was a litigating attorney and I was doing some coaching with um, my team in that position, but I actually ended up um, launching my own coaching business during COVID and it gave me the space and opportunity to do that. So I founded my coaching firm and life has not been the same since it's been quite different. Um, I will say that I have young children. So as far as trying to brave COVID with a three and seven-year-old, that was challenging. Yeah. Um, but we seem to have all made it through. Okay, good deal. Well, let's get to the essence of what you do on a daily basis. So I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. One of the kids looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How would you answer that child? Um, I help people to be their best at work, essentially. Um, my coaching firm, we are committed to executive career and ADHD coaching, which is a little bit different. Um, most coaches have one area of specialization, but we're able to draw from those different areas. Um, I'm also a professional speaker, so I speak on all topics having to do with leadership and uh, performance as well as ADHD. But my real passion and mission in life is helping the ADHD community and helping neurotypical people to understand why our, our brains are amazing and um, how to work with us. So when you were in the third grade, what was your dream to grow up and become? <laughs> um, it was definitely to cut hair in space. I was convinced I was going to be on a space station cutting hair. I never thought about where the hair would go in space, but yeah, that yeah. was my dream. Wow, that's a cool dream. Um, so let's get to how we got to this point. Take me back to where you were born and raised and what were these seeds that were put into you to, to coach and to speak and to help people? So um, both of my parents were in helping professions. Um, my dad was had a very tiny firm as a lawyer and he did tons of pro bono and was really active in that way. My mom was a teacher and she always, you know, was one of those teachers who always went above and beyond. So from a really young age, it was ingrained in me that the some, some of the highest callings are helping other people. Um, you know, I started out as an attorney and I did that in a lot of ways, working uh, at one point for the UN. I worked on a, in a UN agency from the U.S. delegation side, um, helping connect people with food. So I was doing a lot of that, but um, it was more abstract. When you're working in sort of the policy level, you don't get to see the impact. Um, and when I started working with my staff and later with my own clients, seeing the impact and how much you can change someone's life through coaching is, I mean, I don't, I can't think of anything better. Yeah. Um, and especially when I work with ADHD folks and I start telling them about their brain, things that they probably never heard and start introducing them to what's completely normal for our community that many of us think is something wrong with us, but it's not, it's just normal for our brain. Um, it's the best. Yeah. I just, I love that. And of course, I'm a I'm a ham. So when I'm speaking, I love making people laugh. Uh, right that on. also, there's nothing better than that. Absolutely. So let me ask you this: Who's been kind of a hero or a role model for you in your life? Oh, good question. Um, definitely my parents, of course. Just seeing how um, community oriented they were, it's just I mean, it's really, really very impressive. Um, I would also say that some of my role models have been um, some of the public servants that I have worked with. Some people who um, are working in international organizations kind of behind the scenes, but they're doing so much to help so many people um, and just sort of quietly making things happen. And I really admire that. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Oh gosh, that is a hard question. Um, you know, am I allowed to say Penn and Teller because I love oh, yeah. magicians and I would love to have them whisper their secrets to me of how they do it. <laughs> um, I think that they are so entertaining and the way they can get an audience just hanging off every word is amazing. And they do it with humor. And I just love that. 
Oh yeah, they're wonderful. Um, in my jazz radio side of things, Mike is their uh, piano player for their shows, and oh. actually oh Penn is a bass player, and and he he's on a couple albums. So yeah, he's uh, that's so neat. Yeah, yeah, and I've heard an interview with him, and he's fascinating. I mean, the way his brain works and. He's a pretty grounded guy and just the whole thing. But I, I don't know how how hard it would be to get one of them to dish on their secrets, like even Blaine or Copperfield. Like, you know, it's it's kind of like mascots have to keep their uniform on. It's a cardinal sin for anybody to see them. So, you know. And I understand that. I'd respect. Maybe just hear how they wrap the crown around right. their fingers. It'd be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So. What is the motivator for you every day to get up and to do the work that you do and to do it the way that you want to get it done? Um, a couple of things. One is I do have this very strong calling of helping the ADHD community. Um, and, and so seeing my community and, and people feeling better about themselves and being understood is, I mean, it's my passion. It's amazing. Um, the other thing is, and I never thought I'd say this, but as a business owner, I love having my own business. Um, I have five people under me in our firm and it's just, it's so fun to, to make things happen and to connect people. Um, so I just, I love both of those things. I also am a natural teacher, which is why I'm a, a professional speaker. Um, I just actually launched a course this week on how coaches can work with ADHD clients. Um, and it is, uh, it's just so fun when you see light bulbs go off for people. Yeah. What's been your favorite success story as a professional? Um, well, you know, I've had two drastically different careers. I yeah. think um, in my first career, it was, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but I knew it was in international agricultural trade. And I ended up getting this uh, big, case against another country that we ended up winning and it helped our rural communities to get their products into the country and I was just I was so excited to really see the impact um professionally I think my biggest success was honestly being brave enough to launch my my business mm -hmm. um I was a government attorney my entire career and so to go from that to just free fall of having a business I still can't believe I was brave enough to take the step yeah. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into a young version of yourself, say in your 20s, and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life. What advice, what would you tell that younger version of you? Um, I would tell that person that do not let the fear of the unknown hold you back. I think a lot of times we end up getting kind of stuck in place because we imagine that the future, if we do something or change something, it's going to be this catastrophe. When in actuality, we have so much power within ourselves, even if we make a decision and it starts to go slightly wrong or, or you know, we need to tweak it, we have that power to pivot. And so I would tell myself, don't, don't take things too seriously and don't think that you don't have power to make change because you do. So if you could witness one event that took place on this planet and all of the history that we've had, what would you love to have seen firsthand happen? Oh, gosh. Um, well, you're limiting me to the planet. I was going to say the Big Bang just because I really want to know what happened. No, that's your before. answer. We're going to lock that in. <laughs> <laughs> just such a curious person like some of the big questions that we'll probably never have answers to in my lifetime I just I just want to know so badly so yeah. um I'd love to know yeah for sure so everyone out there has a perception of you family friends clients colleagues but you run the show what's your perception of you who do you think you are um I think that I am like many people with ADHD uh highly creative and really great at solving a problem. I have never been in a situation I couldn't figure my way out of, um, which I'm really proud about. I think at the same time, um, people seeing that it's kind of smooth sailing on top, but I'm paddling like, you know, like a duck does with their feet underwater. Um, so I don't think people see all the effort that I put into it. I mean, um, you know, when I'm making a, a putting a talk together for an event or, you know, I put a tremendous amount of work into it so that the delivery feels just effortless. Um, so I think only a few people get to see behind the scenes and see me paddling. So 
as an advocate for the ADHD community and for, for having people have a better understanding, what's one of the most common misperceptions that, since you're so close to it, that maybe people don't understand that you shed light on? Um, well, there's one huge, huge difference between neurotypical folks and ADHD brains, and that's that neurotypical people can prioritize uh, their tasks and what they need to do based on importance. So it could be importance to them, importance to their partner or their boss. Um, ADHD brains essentially don't have that, that setting. Um, we prioritize based on interest. So if something doesn't capture our interest, it is incredibly hard for us to do it. Um, and so for instance, when I'm working with uh, career coaches on how to work with us, one of the important things is that we really, really have to find interest in our career and tools to, to help us build interest into the areas that may be challenging. Um, an ADHD person in a career that doesn't capture their interest is, I can't think of much that would be worse. So of all of the things that you've done and accomplished and overcome in your life, what are you the proudest of? Oh my gosh. Um, I am the most proud of, um, I think of thinking expansively. I know it's kind of a, an abstract answer to your question, but um, you know, when I started my business, I was doing career coaching and then I trained myself or got training in executive coaching and then in ADHD. And so I think that just really, really tapping into my creativity and following my, my interests has been so amazing. And it has taken me on the best places in my life. Whereas when I, in the past have been more steered by sort of the conventional way of doing things and, you know, some, some fear and, and looking for stability, um, things were so much more limited. So I definitely would say just following create creativity and think, thinking expansively. So if anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where can they go? Uh, they can go to www.interlacesolutions.com. Um, and we work with everyone from big corporations that hire us to train and work with their clients to individual coaching um, to, as I said, this course for coaches, which is on the Career Planning Academy website. Um, and it's a certification course. And it's just, it's great. It's everything you would need to know to have a basic understanding of ADHD. Excellent. Ellie, thank you so much for your story. Thank you for taking time out for the show today. Best of luck with everything. I really appreciate it. And thank you as well. This was really fun. Absolutely.